Elon Musk's SpaceX has achieved a monopoly in the rocket market in recent years. Do you think that's enough for him? Definitely no, right? Musk's ambitions go even further than that as he also intends to expand into a young and potential field, commercial space stations. However, it is true that the more potential the market, the more competitors there are. So, to get ahead of the rivals and master the game, Elon Musk and his partner have made a reckless plan to build a new space station that has never ever seen before. In today's episode, we will update the latest news surrounding Musk's plans and analyze the feasibility of the project. On January 18, SpaceX Falcon 9 launched Axiom Space's third private astronaut mission, sending a veteran former NASA astronaut and three astronauts from European governments to the International Space Station. The Axiom 3 mission is the third such mission organized by Axiom Space, which is using them to gain experience in spaceflight operations as it prepares to install commercial modules on the station that will later form the core of a standalone commercial space station upon the retirement of the ISS. The Houston-based company aims to own and operate the world's first commercial space station with the first module operational in 2026. Meanwhile, in Long Beach, California, there is a younger startup called VAST, which also sets a goal for the first commercial space station, a free-flying module that Crew Dragon missions will visit. Can't help but say, although Axiom Space is nearing completion of its HAB-1 pressure vessel, VAST still needs to build hardware for the module, but they announced the plan to launch their space station as soon as 2025, one year earlier than Axiom's plan. However, at least, they are working on prototypes of the structure at its Long Beach, California headquarters, which includes an 11,100 square meter manufacturing facility. Some key subsystems, such as avionics and propulsion, will be based on versions flying on orbiter space tugs originally developed by Launcher and which vast plans to continue flying. In June 2023, they selected Impulse Space, a leader in the development of in-space logistics services, to provide its Haven 1 space station propulsion system. Impulse Space and VAST will work closely to integrate the propulsion system as a key subsystem of Haven 1. In parallel, VAST is actively recruiting high-quality humans, including experienced experts for advisor positions and engineers. So far, they have successfully recruited veteran NASA astronauts Garrett Reisman and Dennis Stone, who had a 38-year career with NASA focused on building the commercial space sector. And a secret weapon of VAST that Axiom doesn't yet have is the SpaceX Starship. On May 10, 2023, VAST announced that it had signed a contract with SpaceX for the Falcon 9 launch of a module called Haven 1, scheduled for no earlier than August 2025. That will be followed by a Crew Dragon mission called VAST-1 that will transport four astronauts to the module for a stay of up to 30 days. Haven-1 is a precursor for much larger space stations. VAST is planning to launch in 2028 a bigger space station module relaying on SpaceX's fully reusable Starship Super Heavy Lift rocket. This is an important step towards the development of a 100-meter-long spinning stick space station that provides various gravitational environments including Earth, Mars, Moon, and asteroid gravities. The spinning stick station formed by seven Starship-class modules will accommodate up to 40 astronauts and is scheduled to be launched in the late 2030. In a longer-term project, VAST aims to operate dozens of artificial gravity and zero-gravity space stations across our solar system. Despite being the latest entrant in the commercial space station race, that does not mean VAST cannot put it ahead of its rival especially since the company has unique advantages. Axiom has huge support from NASA under contract to construct the first commercially manufactured module for the ISS, thus they might have a stronger background in terms of finances. VAST has not yet started when NASA selected teams led by Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, and Voyager Space in late 2021 for funded Space Act agreements to assist in the initial design work on their stations. Axiom has a separate agreement, announced in early 2020, giving it access to a port on the ISS for attaching its commercial modules. Money plays an important role in promoting R&D activities, but that does not mean it can replace the human factor which is the source of strength and creativity. That's what private companies always dominate, the most typical of which is SpaceX, VAST's main partner. Over the years, SpaceX has had a monopoly in aerospace. The launch of Crew Dragon in May 2020 
not only freed NASA from its long-standing dependence on Russian technology, but also ended the era of leadership by national and legacy agencies. So far, Crew Dragon is the only spacecraft to ferry astronauts to and from ISS. It also wows NASA as it has visited ISS more times than the space shuttle and has carried 46 astronauts to space in just four years of operation. Its high safety has persuaded VAST's board of directors to book a Dragon capsule for the VAST-1 mission. The vehicle used to launch the Dragon for VAST-1, the Falcon 9 was also praised for its impressive performance, including successfully landing its booster 251 times as of January 24. In 2023 alone, Elon Musk's company had 91 launches of Falcon 9 rockets, more than any private outfit ever has in a single year. The previous record was 61, set by SpaceX in 2022. Not only that, the Falcon 9's cost per launch is very reasonable, just $67 million, considered to be in the low-cost segment in the market. Falcon 9 is capable of meeting VAST's technical requirements for the mission. Haven 1's module is 10.1 meters long and 3.8 meters in diameter, meaning it is sized to fit the standard Falcon 9 payload fairing. The 14-ton module is not a matter for the rocket's 22.8-ton payload capacity. Like any wise consumer, VAST is also interested in the Starship rocket, a very promising vehicle from SpaceX. With the attractive price of $2 million as well as the most modern features, this rocket has caught the eyes of not only the business, but also scientists. NASA astronomers have even repeatedly proposed scientific research talking about Starship's potential application in astronomy. What we have found is that with Starship, you really have a lot of flexibility. You can certainly launch. Lee Feinberg, the optical telescope element manager for the James Webb Space Telescope at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center said, the availability of greater mass and volume capability at lower cost enlarges the design space. Charles Lawrence, the chief scientist for astronomy and physics at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory said, at the time I made this report, Axiom had not yet revealed who would launch their first module to ISS. Perhaps they will consider cooperating with SpaceX unless they want to be left behind by their competitors. Besides having a powerful partner, VAST's ability to succeed is also assessed based on the company's available potential. Firstly, VAST was founded in 2021 by entrepreneur Jed McCaleb, who is a cryptocurrency billionaire with $2.7 billion net worth. Before launching VAST, McCaleb first dipped into the space industry in 2021, joining the board of Firefly Aerospace after an investment through a nonprofit he founded called the Astera Institute. The second competitive advantage is about simplification. Max Hayat, VAST's president, acknowledged that his company's schedule was ambitious, but that the simplicity of its approach, including leveraging crew dragon systems to support crews when docked to Haven 1, made that schedule feasible. Getting Haven 1 launched early would also, he said, give the company a leg up on the next phase of NASA's commercial low Earth orbit destinations, or CLD program to support the development of commercial stations. The next phase of the CLD program, where NASA will fund certification of those stations for use by agency astronauts, will be a full and open competition, not limited to those who won earlier awards. We see NASA as our biggest opportunity, he said, and vast plans to bid on the next CLD competition, scheduled around the time Haven 1 enters service. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.